My name you guys, it's Karen and I am here to talk about my menopausal hair and how I think I fixed it. When I say fixed it, it's about 90% better now. I think last time I spoke to you I said I felt it was about 80% better but now I'm like 90% there and I'm not sure I ever expect to have 100% the same hair as before because there's more greys in it you know um so before i talk about the hair stuff i'll give you a quick update on watson um because you guys have just been amazing and thank you so much for your support watson had his operation it all went well um i'll put a picture in so if you're not into graphic surgery pictures look away now because it's quite a hefty wound and so it's quite um I was going to say it's going to be quite a recovery, but it's about the same wound as his last one. Um, but he's, he seems to be doing okay. He's got a cough um, and a sore throat, horse throat from having the tubes down his throat. Um, but he doesn't seem to be in too much pain. But of course, I've got good pain relief for him. So we haven't found anything else out about the tumour yet. We need to find out what grade it is and blah, 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 and then find out if it's spread, etc. But he's doing well so far. Today, Kev had to go into his office and he... I think he said it was only him and a few other people in the office at the moment because it's a school holiday so he, t he took Watson with him he has been to the office before um, Kev's got his own office and he just puts a little bed in there for Watson and they've got a beautiful great big woods beside the office and so um, he can take him for a little walk in there obviously he's only getting tiny little on lead walks but it'll be some a different place for him to go you know okay so let's talk menopausal hair what do I mean by menopausal hair well I noticed Gray's kind of earlier on this year as you may remember I started noticing when I put my hair up at the sides here or just on closer inspection I could see that greys were coming through um, then a few months back I don't know how many months it's been but I just started noticing that my hair was getting it felt dry it always it never felt like it was completely hydrated and it got extremely tangly when I was washing it so any shampoo I normally use I just rinse out never would have tangly hair at that point some were better than others you know there was a couple of shampoos where I said oh that made my hair feel awfully tangly but it didn't matter what shampoo I used my hair it would just feel like my hair suddenly matted up and I couldn't get a comb through it or you know even then putting tons and tons of conditioner it was still hard to get my comb through it and normally once I put my conditioner through a wide tooth comb would go through it no problem so it's getting very very tangly it was dry and I was noticing a huge amount of hair loss um, um, so hair loss from just when I was sitting here there was hair everywhere when I'm sitting on the couch there's hair everywhere when I brushed my hair there was a lot more hair coming out when I washed my hair there was a lot more coming out you know I didn't necessarily feel that it was thinner but I feel like I didn't have as much volume in my hair you know I was using the normal volume products but for some reason it it just felt flatter so maybe that is you know where where I'd lost a lot of hair thankfully not too much because it's the one thing I do like is my hair you know and it's like no you know age is going to take my wrinkles it's going to give me wrinkles and all the rest of it and my body's changed but my hair was just kind of holding on you know that and my eyesight have been the two things that I probably mourn the most <laughs> with aging <coughs> and I'm going to be 50 next year by the way and June next year will be my 50th so I think that's all the symptoms if you like my usual products weren't working um my usual tools weren't working my babyliss um you know the rotating brush that I've been using for years and years and years a lot of people used to leave comments and say be careful because it can get caught in your hair and I thought that's never ever happened to me but that started happening I'd use it and constantly was getting my hair caught in it um so why this is all happening is I believe it's menopausal hair I, I think it's hormonal changes you know obviously you lose estrogen as you are I'm perimenopausal I'm still having periods and whatnot um but heavy periods and you know so it's I'm not far off being menopausal. I think when you're 50 or, got, or have gone a year without a period in the UK anyway, that's when they consider you menopausal or postmenopausal. Um, so yeah, hormones and also the grey hairs, you know, although I don't think it's completely obvious, it's just looking like a scattering at the moment. Um, I, there's definitely more, there's definitely more and that's made my hair a lot coarser. So that's what happened and why it happened. Um, let me tell you what didn't work. My usual things, like I said, didn't work. So Olaplex number three is one of the things I tried um, and I used it overnight as I always do and that didn't do, didn't yield any results. I tried my Hair Boss mask, you know the, um, it's by Superdrug, Hair Boss double mask. I tried that and it made my hair feel soft but it was still tangly which was really weird you know um, and it didn't last very long at all you know the effect didn't last very very long um, and I did my oil overnight that I 
this is what I have done for years before all of these like Olaplex products came out or before I could afford them certainly. I would use either olive oil or almond oil or something like that and I would soak my hair in it like literally saturate it so it looked like I had wet hair and then I would wash it out in the morning with a deep cleansing shampoo. I used to always do that when I went swimming as well. Um, in fact I do, still do if you know the next time I go to a spa with my friend I'll probably do the same thing. Um, so I did that left it in overnight and washed it out in the morning and no difference whatsoever. The next thing when these didn't work was for me to do my research. You know me, I love my research. So I thought, let me have a look into what exactly is going on with my hair, what I can do about it, how I can figure it out and, you know, hopefully get it back to some kind of normal. One thing I would mention that I haven't had done, but is definitely on the cards at some point is um, my hairdresser had said that grey hair is very coarse but if I if I went ahead and had highlights which is what I'm talking about at some point I'll be having blonde highlights if you have blonde highlights that, that lighten your hair she said the grey hairs become softer um, and so that is something that I can consider as a more drastic option in the future um, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on my hair at the moment and seeing what I think about the greys you know um, but I do kind of fancy having highlights it's just that it's quite a permanent thing you know so what I found out is that there is a way of testing to see exactly what your hair needs, whether it needs a protein treatment um, or hydration and they're two different things. Something that I learned that I didn't know is that Olaplex is not a protein treatment and a protein treatment includes like keratin is a protein so a keratin treatment would be a protein treatment um, but I knew that Olaplex was a special kind of painted patented ingredient um, that mended bonds but I assumed that there was some protein in it and there isn't so Olaplex kind of sits out with of protein or hydrate um, but yeah you can figure it out so what you do is you take a wet strand of hair so when you've washed your hair or I just wet a bit of my hair and pulled a strand of hair out you sit with it about like so so about what's that eight centimeters and pull it and see does it stretch or does it immediately snap? That's basically the test that you do. If it immediately snaps, then it needs hydration. Let me double check this. Doesn't snap, needs protein, snaps, needs hydration, yeah. If it snaps immediately, it needs hydration. If it doesn't snap, but it, but it stretches, then it needs protein. I suppose the only option I don't see here is, well, what does normal hair do? <laughs> I don't know what it would do if it was normal. Anyway, I did this with mine and it snapped and so, I realized that I needed hydration, I didn't need to use a protein treatment, um, which is good to know because what started that kind of ball rolling was somebody said, do you think you've used too much Olaplex? Well, I actually don't use Olaplex very often. I've used it, I'd say I've bought probably four bottles of it and I use them twice. And so I've used it eight times in the last few years. I, I, you know, I use it every few months. I used to use it when my hair felt bad, which wasn't that often. Um, so I didn't think that it would be too much of anything, but I wanted to look into that. It seems that you can't use too much Olaplex. Um, and I can't find anything about anybody using too much Olaplex and having a problem with their hair. But, it, but what it sounds like is that if, if that is the case, they've maybe used too many other products. So you can use too much protein, um, too much keratin, too many protein treatments will cause your hair to go the other way and feel very dry and frizzy. Okay, so let's get on to the things that I actually did that I feel have made a difference. Um, the number one is kind of obvious, but just in case you haven't thought about it, go for a, a good haircut. Um, I always feel better after a good haircut and it definitely made a bit of a difference. You know, it does, it makes a difference to the tangling and, um, you know, cutting off any kind of damaged hair so a cut is one of the things um, I did less blow drying um, and more straightening so this is a bit of an unusual one I think this is the thing about this video you might think I've gone a bit mad <laughs> with some of the things I'm telling you I'm not saying that these will necessarily work for you but these are things that I have found helped um, so less blow drying is kind of obvious you know treat your, your hair with kid gloves and be gentle with it I already didn't wash it very often I only washed it every three to four days so I thought I'm gonna stop blow drying it but what I found was if I left it to dry naturally as much as I could because my hair takes hours and hours to dry and then straightens it it would be less tangly and it kind of makes sense because you know the you're you're smoothing the cuticle down and you're making the hair more smooth and therefore it didn't get as tangled. Um, so that's something that definitely, I can't say that it helped the health of my hair necessarily, but it did make it feel less tangly and it was less having to like, you know, I suppose it could help my hair in the long run in that I wasn't having to brush, brush it as much. I found that I was using my um, Tangle Teaser so much when it was tangly, but once I straightened it, I didn't need to use it as much. 
Um, number three, again, is something that you'll be like, no, 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 that's not gonna work, but I've put more washing, more wa hair washing. And the reason for this is, like I said, I already didn't wash my hair like every three to four days. And that's something, it took me a long time to get used to that. When I started this YouTube channel, I used to wash it every other day. And I couldn't imagine going three days, you know, because I was desperate to wash it on day two. But my hair had got used to that and was fine. And like sometimes I could go to four days. But again, what I noticed was that when I washed my hair, as long as you're using kind of gentle or um, focused products for the problem, which I'll talk about in a minute, then cleaner hair seemed to be more detangled you know and softer and smoother it just seemed that it wasn't as tangly if I washed it more even though using the shampoo was making it a bit tangly I could feel it getting less and less as I was doing all of these things um so I don't know if that makes sense to you but like I said cleaner hair it's the same kind of theory as as with dogs you know a lot of people tell me you shouldn't wash your dog that often. I heard that so much when I was a grooming. You know, when I have my little grooming salon here and it's it's not right. The problem is if you don't rinse dogs enough. There's certain breeds that have got waterproof undercoats that you shouldn't wash as much, but not many of them. But cleaner coats mean that you can brush easy, more easily through them. And it's the same with hair. Cleaner hair you can, is less tangly. Number four, another perhaps odd one, but I stopped using my volume products because I thought, you know what, they're not working. <laughs> They're absolutely not working. They're not giving me volume. It seems to work a little bit at the beginning and then it's just sort of my hair's flat within like half an hour. I was like, what is going on? Was, I felt quite depressed about it all because like I said, my hair's been really important to me over the years. Even since I was, you know, a young girl, I had so many compliments on my hair and it was, I was never confident about anything about myself, but it always used to make me feel nice that I was like, wherever I went, people complimented me on the color or the shine or something about my hair, you know. Um, so I stopped using volume products because I thought what my hair needs is products that are going to treat it um, and are going to hydrate it. They, volume products by their very nature are going to hold your hair in position and you know oomph them up and so I just thought they're, they're not going to contribute to my hair being smooth and detangled and if I can get to that stage and kind of take things as baby steps then then I can add back in a volume product once I've sorted my hair out. So I stopped volume products and I thought I'm just going to wash, condition or mask or whatever and then put leave-in products in. One of the other things is I stopped putting my hair up as much and using these, these little elastics I've got in here. I don't think it's something you guys will have noticed on camera but, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, off camera on a daily basis, I put my hair up a lot, actually. I use a lot of elastic bands. I mean, I don't use ones that are harsh on the hair, but I will, you know, twist it up and put it in a bun on my hair to walk Watson, or um, I'll put the fringe up in a little, these little elastics when it's not winter, because it keeps it off my face, you know, especially when you're bending down to pick up poops and whatnot, you know, you want the hair off of your face. And so anything like this, like what I'm doing here, this is gonna pull hair and this is gonna make, um, your hair thinner like they say it's not very good for you to do this so I've done this a lot less and on a daily basis just kind of put up with the wind blowing my hair around you know it's not too bad now because I'll be able to wear a hat as soon as it's winter I get my my beanie on and it's fine the next thing I did is a product use and it's this and it is the Alpachin I don't know if that's how you say it but it's the caffeine shampoo um I just got this one from Asda actually but it is it is cruelty free this one and I think it might be vegan and um, they say it's suitable for vegans which I think is a weird way of putting it but anyway um so I got this, like I said, I had done my research. I already knew that minoxidil was a product that was really good for hair loss, and that would be my next product if, if I hadn't found this worked. Um, but minoxidil is a bit more labor intensive. It's something where you have to, I think, put it on your hair at night and let it sit, or and then wash it out, or wash it out in the morning, something like that. I haven't fully looked into it. But I remember um, that I knew about minoxidil because I talked about it as a brow regrowth product. It's, it's the only thing that I think would work to regrow your brows. And I tried it a little bit and they did start growing, but unfortunately my brows were gray years before my hair was and the brows were growing, but they were growing out this way. <laughs> and so it was no good. So I had used minoxidil for that. And I had bought a lotion and just used a little brush on my brows. Um, and so I knew about the science behind min minoxidil. What I didn't realize was, I said to you guys about using nioxin, I didn't realize that nioxin products were actually minoxidil. So that's, I would have gone for a minoxidil type product, probably the Boots own to be honest. 
but there is also some research about caffeine um, and that caffeine helps with hair loss so this is the I'm targeting hair loss with my um, with the caffeine shampoo or with the minoxidil so I thought I would try this first being as it was just a shampoo you just have to put this on and let it sit for a couple of minutes and then rinse it out so I did that for about four or five days and I have used it um, intermittently since I haven't used it on every single wash because I've been using other products that I'm gonna tell you about and I really do feel that this is helping. In fact, it's been a few washes since I've used it and today is the first time in mm, a week and a half to two weeks that I've been noticing more hair again you know i don't know if that was just because i was using a curling tongue on it or whether it is because there's more hair coming out but i'm going to use this today when i wash my hair um for sure so this is something that i think has been really useful um there's a really interesting study actually showing that caffeine and minoxidil together work really well so if you used this along with a minoxidil product if you've got really thin in hair so that's something i would try um and i know that you know the science is there for it to work okay the next thing i used was the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. This has been mentioned to me many times over the last probably year or so. And it's something that I tried like 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. I tried it many, many years ago. I remember I bought it from, I think it was Marks and Spencer's I bought it from. And I, it just didn't do anything for my hair at all. And what I think is that I didn't have damaged hair. You know, I've always had good condition hair, but I was always obsessed with products for dry and damaged hair. But if my hair wasn't dry and damaged, I wouldn't have noticed that much difference. You know, now I think about it. So I thought I would give it a go. I bought a smaller one and it's called Extreme, Elasticizer Extreme. And it was in a little tube. I much prefer that than it being in the, the tub and it was a lot cheaper as well. So I'll try and make sure I link that one for you. So I used that and I used that twice and I had the same experience um, with it both times. And let me tell you that the Elasticizer is a protein treatment and it's also a hydrating treatment. It's a bit of both actually. So I wasn't sure how it would go. So if my hair had have, you know, reacted badly after the first lot, I would have thought that maybe my hair had too much protein. Um, but I, I didn't think it was likely because it's just not something I use very often. So I used it overnight as I do with my Olaplex. So I washed my hair, rinsed it, and then put it, put the elasticizer all through my hair and slept in it, washed it out the following morning. When I blow dried my hair, it just felt really greasy. It just didn't feel nice at all. And I was like, this is horrible. Like I'm sure it may have mended it because it doesn't feel dry, but it just felt really, really greasy. The next time I washed my hair though, it felt amazing. It, it felt like it normally feels after I use Olaplex. It just felt wonderful. And that happened the second time I used it as well. So you could probably assume that it, I use too much product because you know I always do but um, or I didn't rinse it out enough but I did try to rinse it more the second time I used it I washed my hair about three times in the morning you know um, and I still had that greasy feeling but again after the next time I washed it it felt amazing and I feel like since using it twice it's really made a difference overall you know i've washed my hair many times since then and i've used you know caffeine shampoo or different shampoos and different conditioners and i've gone back to older conditioners like the super drug castor oil one i used that that had stopped working for me and it's working fine you know i feel like it has definitely improved the quality of my hair it's a little bit smoother it's a little bit less um tangling the other thing that I have used with great success, and I don't have to show you, I just showed you in my empties, I think it was, was the little Moroccan oil shampoo and conditioner. Um, the Moroccan oil is brilliant, I do have that. This is something I've been using for years and years and always loved it, but it doesn't work brilliantly for me or it didn't work brilliantly for me if I was using volume products because it would just, my hair would seem to go flat. But like I said to you, I kind of stopped using volume products for quite some time and just was concentrating on healing my hair. And using the Moroccan oil shampoo, conditioner, and this definitely makes a difference to my hair. And the shampoo is great. And I would never think I would spend money on a shampoo, but I am going to, actually I put it on my list for today to do, to buy the full size shampoo and conditioner. Um, and I'm not going to use them all the time because they are very, very expensive. But if I feel like my hair is getting a bit tangly again, I'll start to use those because they did really, I didn't have any problem when I used those. You know, my hair didn't feel tangly when I was putting the shampoo in. It felt beautiful, smells beautiful. They're just all round lovely products. And quite a few people have said that they are products they turn to when their 
hair is not feeling great so the Moroccan oil line I'll link the one that I use because it was specific this it's the hydration one not the there's a moisture repair and a hydration so I'm not sure what the difference is between those the next thing I'm going to show you I'm just amazed how good it is is a satin bonnet <laughs> It's this, I actually bought a pack of two from Amazon um, and I just, I mean, I look kind of funny in it, but it's been amazing. And when I say it's been amazing, I have slept on satin pillow for years. You know, you may remember, Kev bought me one for my birthday years ago and I always use it. Um, and I got another one, you know, so that I can switch them over. And so I thought that well, I'm going to try this satin bonnet, but how much of a difference is it going to make? Because I already sleep on a satin pillow. I don't know why. I don't really understand why it doesn't really make sense. But the difference wearing a satin bonnet is immense. Now, I, I can't wear a satin bonnet and sleep on my pillow. I did try it the first night, but my head was literally slipping off the pillow and it wasn't very comfortable at all. And so I'm now put on a normal pillowcase and I'm using this and this is so essential to me it became so essential to me that I took it on holiday I was like I'm not going anywhere without this now I'm sorry Kev you're gonna have to get used to me sleeping in this you know um because I put it on and in the morning I took it off and my hair felt silkier than it had the night before it felt less tangled in the morning than it had when I went to bed and that has never happened with my satin pillowcase I think with my satin pillowcase I just felt like I was it was better for my hair and wrinkles and all the rest of it, you know, because it wasn't, it was silkier to slide, you know, it wasn't going to break your hair as much or whatever, but I didn't ever feel any definite benefit. But from this, I felt a benefit. So like I said, I can't really explain it, but it really has worked wonders. And it just means that it's not, it feels lovely when I wake up. It's almost like I've put some kind of treatment in my hair. So love that. So that's everything that I did to get my hair back to where it is now. I think I would say the four key things are not even the you know less blow drying and straightening and blah 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 I would say the caffeine shampoo helped the most with hair loss and I don't haven't noticed for the last few weeks as much hair coming out the satin cap with the detangling and sort of just smoothness of my hair has been amazing um, I am using that color wow spray um, for frizziness as well and that's helped that also helps a little bit with the detangling but the Moroccan oil shampoo and conditioner and the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. I think those two, those two products have helped hugely with my hair. And so, yeah, I'm delighted. I've started using volume products again and just feeling like my hair is my own. I think the problem, tell me if you feel the same with aging is not that, you know, I think people get annoyed at, oh, you don't, you shouldn't want to look young. It's not necessarily that we want to look young. It's just that for most of your life you've looked and felt a certain way and things have looked and felt a certain way and then they look completely different so you don't feel yourself that's how I feel anyway um, and then with my hair I was just like this does not feel like my hair like I know how to handle my hair and it's not doing what I want it to do and it's not looking it, it takes a huge amount to look okay and even if because I'm sure on video it didn't look any different a lot of you have said oh your hair looked still looks nice it always looks nice but it what it looked like and what it felt like was completely different and how much product I probably had to put it in to make it look smoothed or you know um how often I had to wash it or whatever is they're two different things <laughs> but it's now feeling more like my hair so I'm delighted how long it will last I don't know but like I said I'm going to use my caffeine shampoo today because I'm confident that I can use it and it won't tangle up my hair um I will use my castor oil conditioner and probably some Moroccan oil leave-in and some kind of volume product or maybe the Colour Well spray as well. Um, I'm, I can start to mix products now, you know, now that I know what works. So I hope that this has been interesting for you because the, I think there's a few sort of out there things in here that you might be able to try and you never know, you know. Um, but like I said in my other video about the Colour Well spray, what to do is when you read reviews, try and find reviews that have got your type of hair and, you know, it's kind of the similar type of length and is it thick is it fine etc etc and I think that will help a lot um that's everything that's everything to tell you thank you very much for watching today let me tell you what I've got on makeup wise I have got on the Kiko Insta Moisture Foundation um in I can't remember the number I think it's 1.5 but I'll put it below on my eyes I used the Lorac Pro or Lorac Pro palette um, but on top of it I used a little bit of you know how I've got those matte and metal Huda Beauty sticks I love those just to put a little bit of shine in the middle there on my cheeks is the um, 
Flower Beauty Blush in Sweet Pea. And on my lips is the colour, did I say on my lips instead of cheeks? I don't know. I sometimes watch videos back and I'm saying it all wrong, but hopefully you know what I mean. On my lips is the Colourpop Liquid Lipstick in Midnight Snack. Um, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you again soon.